At 52 years old, I'm returning to Wudong for the second time to learn more Kung Fu and learn about Taoism. So I'm uh, here in one of the main courtyards at the school. It's one where we do a lot of the stretching in the morning and um, and then actually we do uh, our sort of uh, advanced uh, kind of warm-up class, what we call Gong, which is sort of like uh, means basic training or basic uh, skills, basic work. Um, and uh, there's kind of reminders all over the school that uh, this is a Taoist school and it's a Taoist culture in Wudong. So I want to show you one of the walls that we train behind here all the time. I'll just turn this around here. And we'll see that uh, this wall, it's got a guy, an old guy, riding on uh, what looks like a bull, but it's a water buffalo with a, a child, uh, sort of a, a young boy, guiding him along. And uh, there's a whole bunch of writing here too. I need to kind of translate this at uh, some stage of the game. But this guy here is Lao Tzu. So I don't know, you may have uh, heard the name before. And um, he's really kind of the most uh, revered character or figure in uh, Taoism. So one of my goals uh, in coming here was to kind of learn more about Taoism. I knew about Lao Tzu and I knew that he was kind of the central figure of Taoism, but I learned a little bit more while I was here. So Lao Tzu is um, reported to have uh, written the Tao Te Ching, uh, which means kind of like uh, the, the book, the book of the Tao. And um, he uh, lived, so they're not certain, um, but he lived somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, the sixth uh, century BC. And you can see here actually, the Chinese calendar doesn't have uh, BC and AD, like the Gregorian calendar. And in here, there's some um, numbers here of 571, 471. So I think this is kind of, like I said, I haven't translated this, but I think this is talking about either something that he did in those years or they, he uh, uh, lived in the neighborhood of those years, I don't know. But the story is that uh, he was he was sort of a, a man of great uh, education and wisdom, and he worked in the uh, in the kingdom at the time, um, kind of as a uh, kind of a, a, a library or archives keeper. So he had access to all kinds of texts, and uh, during that time there had been like a number of philosophies coming up in um, in China and it was supposed to be I think around the same time that Confucius uh, lived. So Confucius was all about sort of order and the rule of law and uh, kind of set social structure and things like that. But in China as well there was kind of a movement um, even before then uh, kind of centered around kind of getting back to nature um, and kind of understanding the universe and the nature of the universe and that type of thing. So he, even though he kind of didn't invent that concept, he really kind of latched onto it and developed a whole lot of philosophy and wisdom around it. So the story goes that uh, when he was kind of in his 80s, um, he decided he kind of had enough of uh, kind of the, the uh, society or the civil life in the kingdom. So he wanted to kind of leave and uh, go west. Uh, so maybe, you know, kind of uh, towards India, and there's some stories that he actually went all the way to India. And uh, the idea was that uh, he was going to kind of get away from society, get back to nature and explore this idea of finding the Tao. So the Tao really in this case means sort of the path or your, or your ability to be kind of 100% in sync with nature. So as he was trying to leave the, the city or sort of the western gate of the kingdom, there was a guard there. And the guard said, you can't go, you're too much of sort of a value to the kingdom, you're a real wise man. So the only way that I'll let you pass 
is if you write down everything that you know so that we can have that wisdom uh, for the benefit of the kingdom. So he agreed and he sat down for I'm not sure how long and he wrote what's reported to be uh, to become the Tao Te Ching and he handed it over to the guard, the guard read it and then the guard um, loved it so much that uh, he actually decided to become sort of a disciple of Lao Tzu and really follow this idea of the Tao and hence Taoism. Um, some stories are, go that the guard stayed in the kingdom, kind of opened schools, took on disciples and so on. Other stories say that he left with Lao Tzu and uh, traveled west and was never seen again. So a lot of this is sort of couched in, uh, in uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, so sort of historical obscurity and myth and that type of thing. Uh, but the idea was that uh, the man in his 80s kind of rode off west on this water buffalo. Um, he did have a guide with him, and that's not the guide, it's supposed to be a young boy guiding him. With. And either he kind of disappeared forever, became immortal and ascended to heaven, um, or he moved to India. Some stories even say that he became uh, the Buddha. So it's hard to really say what's the truth and what's not in this case. But the Tao Te Ching itself was sort of passed down through generation through generation. And it probably got changed and modified uh, over the years. It was a book that was written without any punctuation or anything. Um, so if you saw the lecture that uh, Jake gave in one of the previous episodes, uh, he really goes through some amazing explanation about that. Um, so the figure kind of got changed over the course of the years. and then. They get end up getting translated into a lot of languages, like English, our language. Uh, so there's, you know, hundreds or dozens or even more translations of it. And so they've kind of changed some of the concepts and some of the language around it. Uh, but the whole idea kind of remains uh, that, you know, the idea of Taoism is kind of finding your own true path that's in, um, in sync with the universe. Uh, the universe is part of nature and nature in the universe is part of you. Uh, so every time we train here, uh, I'm really reminded of all that uh, as, we're, as we're looking at this, uh, and at the same time sweating and suffering and being in pain, <laughs> and then knowing that we're gonna have to come back here and do it again. Now this courtyard here is another good example of us being kind of surrounded by the idea of the Tao and uh, Taoism as, as we have our practice. So um, here there's a number, a number of things. So actually we train here, uh, so often people train Tai Chi here or in the hot uh, afternoon sun. It's kind of beating down now, but as the sun goes down uh, behind the building over there, then there's a little bit more shade here, which is a little bit nicer. So we got a number, number of murals here that are, that are kind of neat. Uh, this one here, a couple of old guys playing uh, checkers, Chinese checkers. Uh, I'm not 100% sure who they are, but uh, if you know, enlighten me, but I, I think it's possible. Uh, this could be Lao Tzu, and then this could be the guard uh, that uh, he was trying to um, uh, sort of get permission for uh, leaving the kingdom from. And if we look over here, here's uh, Lao Tzu as well. This one's cool, it's a 3D kind of thing. Uh, but over here, is kind of another neat thing when I turn this around. Um, this is full of a uh, huge amount of symbolism and Taoism. Uh, so this depicts the eight immortals. So these were three, or sorry, not three, these were eight people who through different kinds of study and deeds and dedication to Taoism uh, became immortal and sort of ascended to heaven or kind of stayed on earth uh, immortal people never dying uh, and had extreme wisdom so they were six men one woman and another character that's sometimes portrayed as a man sometimes portrayed as a woman and actually sometimes portrayed as a hermaphrodite and uh, so they lived um, sort of uh, in the AD uh, section of time, so long after Lao Tzu passed, uh, but they dedicated themselves to the Tao Te Ching and, um, and to Taoism. And each one has uh, different kind of characteristics that embody uh, their personalities or personalities of society itself. 
Um, I don't know them all or all their names by heart, uh, but it, uh, if you're interested, you should definitely, uh, definitely look them up, read up on them. Uh, but uh, a few of the things, uh, you know, um, one or two of them are sort of known for being heavy drinkers, <laughs> sort of party animals, and you'll see them here in this in this mural. They're all uh, around the table, enjoying themselves, socializing, drinking. Um, one of them uh, was um, sort of a crippled guy. Uh, he's known for walking around on a iron crutch, and apparently um, he started off being a really handsome guy. Um, I think his name is Lou, Lou something. Anyway, he started off being a really handsome guy and he was doing some Taoist sort of uh, alchemy and he was able to leave his body and he had his disciple uh, guarding his body and he told his disciple, if I don't come back in like five days, I think it is five days, um, then, uh, then you can, means I'm not coming back, you can burn my body. Um, so the disciple waited like four and a half days, but then he had to go see his sick mother. <laughs> and then um, after that time, um, the immortal, he actually came back looking for his body. Um, but the disciple had already burned his body early. So he had no body to go back. So there was apparently uh, a beggar who had just died of starvation uh, not long before that. Uh, so he was crippled, he had a scraggy beard, um, you know, really kind of rough features and everything like that. Um, you know, this lame leg and everything like that. Uh, so the immortal this, uh, could only inhabit this body, it was the only one around. Uh, so because he made this huge sacrifice, apparently Lao Tzu made him this indestructible iron um, crutch. And he, he walks around on the crutch. So this symbolism is all throughout Chinese culture, uh, not just Taoism, but these are these are heavy, heavy uh, kind of Taoist characters and symbols in Taoism. So, so a huge part of um, part of uh, Taoist teachings and part of the school, and hence part of Kung Fu in Wudong and Kung Fu at this school. So you see, there's a number of forms actually that we call the eight immortal forms. Uh, there's an eight immortal fist, an eight, eight immortal sword and an eight immortal staff. So um, eight immortal in Chinese, uh, you, you say it uh, ba xing. So ba is eight, xing is immortal. So you have eight immortal staff, ba xing guin, eight immortal sword, ba xing jin, and eight immortal fist, ba xing chuan. Um, so uh, I'll actually I'll put here two of the forms uh, so you can see. Um, I'll put eight immortal sword and eight immortal staff. And take a look at the forms. You'll see that there's different characteristics in the forms. So you'll see actually people imitating the guy on the crutch or imitating the guy drinking um, or you're uh, imitating a guy kind of sleeping. So, um, so you'll see like the different personalities are kind of embodied in the movements of the, uh, of the Kung Fu form. It's really kind of interesting. So uh, just check it out and enjoy that.